Okay, food is super important. Super important. It's a big part of your day, right? You need food to live, right? It's very important. You know, if you've seen many of our videos, that we love carrots. Carrots are a great example of a food that can give us lots of energy, that can help us through the day. Food isn't just for people. Here's a dog eating a treat. That looks yummy, you know, for a dog. You know, fish have to eat, and so do bears. Look at this bear eating berries. It's kind of funny, a bear eating berries. <laughs> uh, that's only kind of funny. Enjoy your berries, Mr. Bear. Sorry, it's, you know, enjoy. Keep eating, keep eating. Did you know even plants, like trees, need food? Did you know that? Isn't that cool? In fact, all living things need food. All living things need food. But how do they get that food? Hmm, that's a good question. That's what this video is all about. To find out how living things get food, you will be learning about something called the food chain. Can you say that with us? The food chain. Yes, the food chain. Now, a food chain isn't an actual chain of food, like a long chain of carrots, okay? That's not what the food chain is, even though that would be really cool. The food chain explains how living things get the food they need. The food chain. There are different parts of the food chain. We are going to learn about the different parts of the food chain to see how living things get food. First, we are going to learn about producers. Producers make up the first part of the food chain. Producers are living things that make their own food. If a living thing creates its own food, it is a producer. We are surrounded by producers everywhere we go because every plant is a producer. Yep, every plant in the entire world is a producer. That grass, it's a producer. It makes its own food. Those trees, they are producers. They make their own food. These flowers, they are producers. They make their own food. Now wait, how can plants make their own food? You never see a plant in the kitchen saying, hey, I'm gonna cook something real fast. I need to make some of my own food. So can you tell me where the pans are? No. Plants make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Wow, that's a big word. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is amazing. Plants use energy from the sun to make their own food. That's why plants need sunlight. So plants make their own food, but they don't cook or bake. They get energy from the sun to make their own food. Photosynthesis. You know, that's one of the reasons you'll never see plants shopping for groceries to get food. <laughs> You'd have to tell the plant, hey, don't you use energy from the sun to make your own food using photosynthesis? It's nice to meet you and everything, but you need to make your own food, you know, using sunlight, water, and air. You're a producer. So, when the sun is shining on plants, just think of how the sunlight is helping the plants make their own food using photosynthesis. That is how plants are producers. They make their own food. Producers make their own food. Okay, <laughs> pull it together. All right, let's, let's cut off the sad music. There's nothing sad about photosynthesis or sunlight, <laughs> okay? Where were we? Hmm. Oh yeah, it's time to see the next part of the food chain. Consumers. Uh-huh, consumers. Now, consumers have to look outside of themselves for food. They cannot create their own food using photosynthesis as producers can. As you might have guessed, we humans are consumers. We don't make our own food using photosynthesis. Now, there are farmers who grow food, cooks who make different foods, 
But we are all consumers. We didn't make our own food within ourselves. We eat the foods in our environment or around us that help us stay healthy and strong. And we aren't alone. You know, fish are consumers. Uh huh. Cats are consumers. Birds are consumers. Animals are consumers. It's interesting, there are different types of consumers. There are herbivores, which are consumers that eat only plants. There are carnivores, which are consumers that only eat meat. And there are omnivores that eat a combination of plants and meat. Okay, let's see if we can remember this. All right. So herbivores stick to plants. That's what they eat. Carnivores eat meat. And omnivores eat a combination. This will be fun. Can you guess what type of consumer a gorilla is? Hmm. What type of consumer is a gorilla? Yeah. Gorillas are herbivores. They eat only plants. They love eating plants with leaves and enjoy bamboo as well. Gorillas are herbivores. They eat only plants. All right, can you guess what type of consumer a frog is? What type of consumer is a frog? Frogs are carnivores, yeah. They only eat meat. They love eating insects, worms, and if they are big, they can eat bigger creatures like mice, small snakes, and more. Frogs are carnivores. They eat only meat. Hey, what about us humans? We are considered omnivores. That means we have the ability to eat a combination of plants and meat. Just because we can eat a combination of the two doesn't mean we have to, though. Many people around the world only eat plants. Many others around the world eat a combination of the two. But because we have the ability to eat both, scientists consider us omnivores. Remember the bear from the beginning? Bears are omnivores, too. They like eating berries, but they also can eat meat. They eat a combination of plants and meat. They're omnivores. Okay, now we have come to a very interesting part of the food chain. Decomposers. Decomposers, can you say that with us? Decomposers. That's right. This might sound weird. But decomposers are living things that take apart dead animals. That's right, they take apart dead animals. Decomposers have a very important job. They break down dead animals so that plants can get more nutrients from the soil. Some examples of decomposers are fungi, worms, and snails. But how do they take apart dead animals? Well, decomposers like to eat dead things. In the case of fungi, they release stuff called enzymes which break down dead matter, and then the fungi takes in the nutrients. You've probably seen fungi before. Did you know that mushrooms are fungi? That's right. Oh no, that reminds me of a joke. Can I, can I tell the joke? I don't, I don't know if I can resist. That mushroom sure looks like a fun guy. <laughs> I get it because mushrooms are fun guy. <laughs> Feel free to share it with your friends. It's comedy gold. So decomposers break down dead animals, which helps the soil. The better soil helps the producers, which are plants. Then consumers eat the producers, other consumers, or both, depending on what type of consumer they are. Then after the consumers die, the decomposers break them down to help the soil. And it starts all over again. It's like this chain. It's the food chain. Remember, the parts of the food chain are producers, consumers, and decomposers. All living things need food, and every living thing has its place in the food chain. Producers make their own food using photosynthesis. 
Consumers can't make their own food. They eat plants or meat or both, depending on what kind of consumer they are. And decomposers eat dead animals, bringing nutrients to the soil to help the producers. What a chain, the food chain. Special thanks to our patrons who make videos like this possible. If you would like to support us and get cool homeschool pop tattoos, click the link below this video or visit homeschoolpop.com. As always, you are awesome. We hope to see you next video. I still think a chain of carrots would be cool. Okay, can anyone help me down? I, I have this shopping cart. I'll share it with you. Anybody? Am I going to be stuck up here? Anybody? Hello? Hello?